to be here. Um, this has been an awesome conference, and I'm excited to be participating and hope to share with you some interesting insights that could be useful to you as well. So I'm going to talk to you a little bit about scaling data science at Airbnb. Uh, scaling has come up a lot in this conference, uh, both in terms of um, well, maybe less in terms of building teams, which is one thing that I'm going to talk about, and more in terms of how do we um, expand our scope, automate our work, make everything more streamlined and more efficient. Um, so I'm going to talk to you a little bit about how we've done that at Airbnb, including how we've used R to do that. A little bit of background. I started at Airbnb almost four years ago. Um, I have a PhD in education, so one of the great things about data science, I think, is it brings people from many different backgrounds into the field who all bring unique tools and skill sets. Uh, our team has converged mostly on R and Python at this point, though there are the occasional Stata and MATLAB users and other types of programming languages. Airbnb is actually uh, Ruby on Rails, so some people will code in Ruby or uh, our team has grown from five to 70 data scientists over this time period, so a ton of growth in terms of hiring in our team. Uh, fun fact for this conference, 54% mostly use R. 29% mostly use Python, and everyone else uses some mix or other types of languages. However, 80% of the team state that they are very comfortable in R, and 50% are very comfortable with Python. So a lot of uh, people who understand the other language, even if they don't necessarily primarily use that language. Over the same time period, the company has grown from 200 to 2,500. So this is a story of scaling our data science team and also thinking about how the company has scaled with the team. OK, so challenges facing a data team. These are the three I'm going to cover. Uh, first, there's building the team. And then there's structuring the team within the company. And finally, there's this piece about scaling the work. Um, so there are a number of Airbnb-specific problems that we've worked through. I'm not going to talk about specifically build, you know, how do we build a two-sided marketplace, how do we in foster trust, or specific data questions, but I'm going to talk you through these kind of higher-level problems that we've faced and tackled, and in the scaling the work, uh, to focus a little bit on how we've used R to do that uh, as it's relevant to this conference. In terms of building the team, um, if we talk about what is a data scientist, that's sort of our first question. This obviously means many different things in different companies and contexts. At Airbnb, it also means a lot of different things. At a high level, it's a little bit about interpreting. So when we think about all these different data points, the data scientist's role is to take those data points and make something that actually uh, can inform a decision or be helping our users. A couple of examples of questions that might be asked of a data scientist are these questions. So the first one is suggest price to host. And this is one where you know, a host might list their place on Airbnb, and they don't necessarily know what's the right place. But we have all this data, right? Like We know all about their listing. We know all about the listings in their neighborhood. We know about the demand of people coming to their area. And so we can utilize that data to then suggest a good price to the host to help them to get the bookings they want. So there is machine learning. You have to build data pipelines. You have to think about how hosts will be interacting with this product and do A-B testing there. Some other different types of questions could be determining the value of professional photography. So fun fact, Airbnb has 3,000 photographers around the world that take photos of listings. And that's why you see so many places on Airbnb that have gorgeous photos. Um, this is an expensive operation, right? And so one important question is, like, what's the return on the investment of that operation? Um, and so that's something where you might need to do some experiments, analysis, different types of skill set involved in answering that kind of question. Another question could be, how do we optimize our booking process? So this might be a more standard funnel analysis, looking at where people are clicking as they're making a booking, and try and understand how to improve that process through rapid iterations and experiments. So to attract data scientists, we look for a number of different types of skills. So first, uh, well, hang on, sorry. I just realized this, too many animations. We look for technical skills and business skills. So obviously, <laughs> coming together, um, you need to obviously be able to program, understand statistics, be really rigorous. At the same time, you need to be able to communicate your results. I'm going to talk a little bit about the structure of our team, but we do work really cross-functionally. And so uh, this side of communication and um, presentation is really important. As such, when we think about 
assessing our candidates, we have to take into account those different aspects of what we're looking for. We've iterated on our interview process quite a lot and actually have landed on this very uh, practical-oriented interview process. So we give people a take-home with our data and ask them a question, and they come back to us with the answer. And then when they come on site, they also get a data challenge, which is a problem that we've asked of an Airbnb data scientist, and then they get to work on that. At the end, they'll present, and then the final piece is a number of one-on-ones with cross-functional partners. So this is something that, as I said, we've iterated on a lot. We've actually wrote up a really nice Quora post about this. And we've noticed that a lot of companies now are actually utilizing the same process, where it's much more about seeing what people can do rather than um, answering a brain teaser or filling out something on a whiteboard. Um, and in our experience, this has been a lot better predictor of how people are going to be when they arrive, and also gives the candidates what it's actually like to be at Airbnb as a data scientist. Finally, one important piece that's dear to my heart is diversity. So this was something that we worked on quite a bit over the last year. Um, as we were going really quickly, we realized that our diversity numbers were not where they wanted to be. And so we were able to double the percentage of women on our team from 15% to 30%. Um, talk a little bit about that process and what we're working on now. Again, here is kind of the trajectory of our data science team as of 2014. Diversity was something that we all talked about as being important to us, but we weren't seeing results. And so we actually only had four women out of the team of 28. Taking a data science approach, you can think of the hiring process as a funnel. You start with top of funnel applications, and then you see how people move through the different steps. When we did that, we found that 30% of our applicants were women. And we didn't see a drop off in kind of the top of funnel to the take home test, but we saw drop offs after the take home test and the on site challenge. So, what this told us was that there is an opportunity here to uh, attract more women to apply at Airbnb, 30%. Could be higher, but also to really look into those stages and see like what's going on there that we're seeing this differential drop off. Obviously, this was not what we intended, and so we needed to look closely. And this is something that I would encourage all companies to do. It's really not that difficult, and it could be pretty informative to you as you're trying to attract uh, the right kind of talent and build the team that you feel like will be the best kind of team with lots of different ideas and people's voices in the room. Um, changes that we made uh, to double the percentage of women. Um, top of funnel, we started hosting lightning talks for women in data, showcasing women who were doing lots of different types of data science work from different kinds of backgrounds. We had da data dinners for women in data science. We wrote blog posts and did interviews uh, highlighting the contributions of women on our team, which really builds the profile of women in data science more broadly as well, and not just for Airbnb. When it comes to conversion, we looked really carefully, again, at those different stages. And we realized that as we were doing these take-home challenges and these on-site challenges, we weren't really being clear enough about what the standards were that people were evaluating these take-home challenges on. So people were like, oh, the analysis is good. Well, what does that mean? Like, Let's be a little more concrete about what good means and actually have this super well-defined grading rubric where instead of good or bad, it's you know, did the person do this thing that we would look for in the ideal take-home data challenge. And we did a lot of grader training. We have two graders for every take home so that we could ensure consistency. Um, and then when people came on site, we gave them an interview buddy to help them to feel a little more supported throughout the day. So this person would get coffee with them and then be there the whole time. And then when it came to the presentation, we ensured that 50% of the people in the room were women so that people would feel like they were not necessarily the odd one out and you know, feel very comfortable. And we found that these changes actually improved our interview process for everyone. Um, so we felt really good about this. Um, and then when it comes to scale, so obviously we did this for our team, and we wanted to make sure that the rest of the team had access to this. So we actually have a data scientist and data engineer who built out dashboards showing diversity data for all the teams across the company so that they could have this, not just with regards to gender, but also different racial groups. And so we're hoping that this will be useful as the rest of the company is thinking about hiring and um, creating this really diverse group that is the team we want. All right, so that's building the team. Uh, so we've hired lots of data scientists. We're really excited about the awesome skill sets we've got on our team. Uh, how do we structure the team within the company? And this is a really important part of building a team that I think I don't actually hear that many people talk about, but it makes a pretty big difference for how successful a team can be um, and whether it'll really be leading the company or be on the sidelines. Um, and so, 
Just to start, there's this centralized model. So this was actually the team when I joined. Uh, we were all sitting together, and this was great for career development in terms of your technical skills and growing in the data science org. So we were all sitting together. We were all learning from each other. It was great. But we constantly heard from our business partners that they were like, we need more of you. Like, We don't get to talk to you very much. You're kind of off in a corner, and we don't get to have that iteration with you um, that we would want to have. And so that's really the embedded model where you're have a data scientist within a given product team or operational team, and that's great for developing domain knowledge, for thought leadership, and for direct impact because you're right there with the business partner as they're making decisions, um, and that's really a great place to be when you're trying to influence the company. However, that was terrible for career development because most of our data scientists were the only people working on their teams, and so they were sitting by themselves alone on, in a given team. So we have what right now a hybrid model that's been kind of the sweet spot that we've had for the last couple of years now, where we have an internal data science org where you report into the head of data science, and that's great for the career progression. But we also sit in clusters on the data and on the different teams. So we'll have three or four data scientists, sometimes up to ten, in a group, sitting with their team. So some so kind of like a hybrid in between these two models that's ended up working really well for us and helps our data team to really be leaders at the company, but also have a really happy and strong team culture. OK, now for the fun part of scaling the work, uh, most relevant to this crowd at the moment. So when we think about scaling data science, it's really about like, how do we automate work that we know can be automated? It's really easy to automate, and we shouldn't necessarily need to be repeating anything that we're doing. The first place to start is obviously experiment reporting. So this is usually pretty straightforward analysis where you're running hundreds of experiments at a company. It would be totally impractical for a data scientist in, to analyze each one. And so having some sort of structured reporting like this is really powerful. So we built this tool called DRF. Um, you can read about it. Essentially automates basic segmentation, treatment effects, significance over time. We have a team of people that develop on this. It has a lot of cool features now, like power analysis, different ways of capping outliers, um, different ways of dealing with um, when you're uh, randomizing on a user versus a cookie. Um, and this has been huge for automating our work. The next really important part of our team scaling is this thing called the knowledge repository. Um, and so the knowledge repository started off a couple years ago when we realized, again, the team was growing, and we couldn't know everything that was happening at the company. And we had to find some way to have a centralized place where we could store all of our learnings, but not just the learnings. We wanted to store all of the analysis. We wanted to be able to reproduce our work really easily. We wanted it to be searchable for other people as well so that anyone at the company could then go in and see, what do we know about supply growth at it on Airbnb, and they could find out everything that's been done on that topic. So we have this tool now called the Knowledge Repository. It's a single source of truth. You can search and easily see if work has been done in the past, so you never have to repeat work. I'll talk a little bit about the structure, but it has peer review, so that really helps to improve the quality of the work. You can learn best practices by reading different people's work in the knowledge repo, which can be really cool. So say you see that someone has implemented this really cool new visualization, and you want to be able to do it too, you can go and look and see all the code. Um, it's also great for discovering content, again. And this has been so much fun to see happen. Um, we hired a new director of product a couple months ago, and she learned about the knowledge repo. She was like, I couldn't stop reading it. It was so cool. And recently, you know, we were talking about spinning up a new team. And we we're like, oh, what should the metric be for this team? And she's like, well, you know, I found in the knowledge repo this post a couple months ago on this metric. I think we should use this. And I was like, what? Are you kidding me? Like, this is amazing. Um, and so it's really great for just empowering the entire company to uh, understand the insights that are coming from a data team so that you don't necessarily have to like have your own personal data scientist. You can go and see all of the body of work that's happened and learn from that. So that's been pretty awesome. Uh, behind the scenes, it's a Git repository. Um, we have markdown files, so we check in either our markdown, Jupyter Notebooks, or plain markdown. Um, there's some metadata that you have to put in, which is, again, helping with searchability. So tags, a TLDR to summarize. 
pull requests for peer review. This is huge. Um, nothing undermines the power of a data team when people can't uh, understand what you did or don't get the same numbers or get different numbers. And so having this pull request and making sure that we have peer review process is very important for the data culture. And finally, there's a Flask web app where the, the content is rendered as a blog, so that's pretty easy for people to navigate. They don't necessarily have to go in to get to see your work. None of this would be possible, though, without Airbnb. Uh, so Airbnb is our collaborative package for our users at Airbnb. I have a little note here. There's also AirPi. They are essentially equal. So one is not more overdeveloped than the other. Uh, any team member can become a contributor. And the idea is to really abstract common tasks. Um, so for example, there's a nice way with ERF stats to reproduce the ERF statistical calculations if you wanted to see and expand upon an experiment result. There are templates for the knowledge repo. So again, this makes it so much easier to submit to the knowledge repo when you have these templates where you can just, you don't have to worry about any of the formatting. You just start typing your content. Um, when we want to move quickly, that can be huge. Uh, right now, there are over 60 functions in our BNB, um, and it's continuously under development and improving. Whenever you do something that you think other people might want to do, you can write a function. So that's pretty awesome for scaling our work. Uh, if you want to read more about this, uh, Ricardo on our team just published a Medium post on using our packages and education to scale data science at Airbnb. Um, so that's a great uh, reference for people. I'll talk a little bit about my highlights, which may seem like silly highlights, but they're so great that I have to talk about them. Um, the first one is Presto Get. So all of our data is generally stored in Hadoop, and you can query it using Presto or Hive. And what this allows you to do is to never leave your R Studio environment, right? So you just have your R Markdown file, you write Presto Get, you write your query, and you don't have to do anything else. Everything happens behind the scenes. If the cluster is moved, if we spin up a new cluster, don't worry about it. Everything gets updated in Airbnb. This makes it so much easier to develop really quickly. Um, and similarly, there are a lot of different functions here that are on the page that make our work a lot easier and standardized. So for example, imputing data year over year, putting data on S3, it's pretty awesome. My other favorite thing here is ggtech. Uh, again, it seems like a silly thing, but it's so great. So essentially, you never have to do any more colors or formatting of your plots ever again, because we have this theme, Airbnb, which automatically makes everything look beautiful. And at a design-led company like Airbnb, this is very important. Uh, so <laughs> you don't have to worry at all. Everything will be in theme. And so I said, this is the best thing ever. Uh, it is open source. You can put your own company's theme, um, and not have to worry about colors ever again. Uh, another quick call out here is um, we do use Shiny quite a bit at Airbnb. Um, some of our main dashboards are Shiny dashboards, also Tableau. And I, this is one of my favorite dashboards. It's booking conversion metrics. It's um, a Shiny dashboard. You can put all the different metrics that you could look at for booking conversion. So number of searchers, number of contactors, number of bookings any ratio of the two, different chart types, different date ranges. Do you want to see year over year? Do you want to filter by any of these different filters? Um, it's built using our charts. There are 5,000 and more custom charts that are pre-aggregated. And so when you do the selections, it's essentially instantaneous. It's way, way faster than any dashboard I've ever used. And that makes it so much easier to understand what's happening with our metrics. We also have like cool features like event date. I don't know if you can see that. It's a little small. But um, we have teams around the world that actually collect different events that are happening that might be impacting travel. And so that's all stored and can be displayed in this chart. So if you want to see like, oh, wait, there's like this weird, weird spike that's happening in Singapore. Why, could, why is that happening? You can see, oh, there's like this conference there that's happening. Um, and it just is so helpful for really understanding what's going on in the business. And this is used by hundreds of people at the company. Um, I want to go a little faster because I know I'm running short on time, but um, you can read about in the blog post. A big part of scaling the team is about education. So we have a moose camp. Our spirit animal is the moose. And you can learn R and Python and how to use the knowledge repo. Uh, and that's a great way for scaling uh, our knowledge. 
To close, I wanted to uh, have a quick example of the new world with an automated data scientist uh, scaled um, and also point out some areas where we still have work to do. So uh, this is fresh off the press. A couple weeks ago, a team came to me and they said, um, we want to add bed details to homes on Airbnb. So some of you may have seen this feature. It's part of an experiment. So um, essentially, when you go to list your place, there wasn't a spot where you could put structured data about the types of beds. So you might have to write it in detail in your description. If you're a host, you might forget to write it. And so the idea here was to have this in really nice structured data to help the host when they're describing their place and also to help guests know what to expect. Um, and so there were a couple of metrics that the team thought this would impact. In particular, they thought it would impact bookings and whether a listing got booked. So they went ahead and launched this feature. They checked the knowledge repo first to make sure that uh, this hadn't been worked on in the past and uh, to see what research had been done. Put it in the ERF, and they see amazing lifts in bookings and newly booked listings. So I get an email from the engineering lead on the team, and he's like, well, we see this great lift. We're ready to attribute it. Do you want to like, have someone take a quick look just to be sure? Because we didn't expect the results to be so big. Um, and so I was like, OK, cool. We'll take a look. And when we look, we find that 30% of the control group also has bed details. So we're like, oh, no, something went wrong here. Um, as is unfortunately can be the case in running experiments. And what had happened was that the engineers had implemented the experiment properly in the listing funnel, where as you were first signing up and putting your listing up, you would either see bed details or not see bed details. But after you completed the flow, you could then easily go back and add bed details. And a lot of people, after they finished, would then go back and edit their listing some more and see this great new bed details feature and add their bed details. So not the end of the world. We can still analyze this, but it did require an extra look. Um, and to the, to the point here, it, it basically made me think, well, actually, what we needed to be doing is reviewing the experiment design, right? And that might be a little bit harder to automate through the ERF. Still not impossible, and for sure there could be work done there and also with education. Um, but this is an example of how we've done some of the work to scale our team and automate the work, but there's still some, some room to grow. Um, so in conclusion, uh, building the team, focus on practical interviews and diversity. When we're structuring the team, think about a hybrid model. And when it comes to scaling the work, um, there's the knowledge repository. One thing I should note is that we are considering open sourcing this. So if people are excited about the knowledge repository, please let me know and can put you in touch uh, with the team that's working on it. Um, experiment reporting is huge, Airbnb and AirPi, having dashboards to help automate work, and then finally, education. Thank you. Thank you very much.